All right, we're on a limestone quarry this morning, electro fishing, just to kind of get a glimpse of what these fish look like and uh, help come up with a plan to grow more bigger fish. It's a very low population of fish already per the uh, homeowner. And so now it's just a matter of figuring out what's happening and how we can fill this baby up with biggins. Stay tuned. a lot of fish down we might end up getting a bunch of fish uh, which would be kind of cool so we're racking them up but man this end could be like loaded or it could just be nothing but uh i'm hoping for the load we call this the bear pit when you look at a google map of it we're in right now we're in the neck it looks just like a bear we're in the neck up here's the head Better the legs. All right, well, check out that aerial. All right, well, we started to pop a few fish. It's definitely just like uh, lives up. Not a lot of fish, and, and those are actually full-grown fish in the tank. I know it doesn't look like it, but those are uh, not just all two-year-old fish. Those are three, four, five, six, seven, even eight, nine, ten-year-old fish. So that's what we're looking at right now, and uh, we're gonna come up with a plan to. Uh, Start growing some big ones. This is going to be an easy one to get some results. It's going to happen pretty quickly. More of the same. Let's keep at it. What's he see up there? There we go. Well, not exactly the species we're looking for, but it's a good sized fish. Saw something flash. Oh, that's always fun. Thanks, Crappie. I'd like to see more of them. Now we're going through another channel, and this one leads to another, what, 20 acre lake? What does this one lead to? All right, probably 30. Oh, awesome. So here's the thing there's not a lot of fish, but you can, you can actually attract all of these fish to your dock area. So that's going to be a big part of the initial strategy is by making a huge reef out in front of your main zone so that the kids and, and uh, nieces and nephews, everybody's just going to be able to start catching fish. We don't have to fill up the whole lake with fish in order to have fun right away. I mean, that's going to be pretty instant. It looks like we got a beaver den up here. This could be loaded. Last time I said that, though, it didn't pan out. Uh, but let's hope that this time it does. Something you're going to want to really pay attention to is the, um, with your overflow, the beavers are not going to want to waste any of the water going out your overflow. They're going to plug that thing up every single time it runs. Looks like we got something up there ahead. Another car. coming up underneath you guys. Not a lot of those, but that's a nice one. Pretty cool beaver dam right there. My favorite places to electrofish are by the beaver dens. So let's just see if this one has uh, been active recently enough to where there will be some fish hanging by it. If not, there won't be much. So one of the biggest keys is with almost 65 acres of water 
in a bunch of kids, nieces, and nephews uh, that want to fish, this is your magic zone right here. So it's not like we need to fill up the whole lake with all of the fish right away. That's going to take a little bit of time. But the biggest key is going to be get the habitat in the water. You can see those uh, cedar trees in the background. Those are the ultimate. But I'm talking 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 of them in a way where it's out of the swimming zone but still castable from the dock. Just that alone is going to bring the fish right to you. And you add a fish feeder on the dock along with it, start strategically stocking some feed trained fish, and man, you're gonna have something beautiful. These, these sterile, infertile limestone pits with a lot of deep water and no ag runoff, uh, they can be a little bit tricky to have a bunch of fish in them, but with a, with a little, little bit of fish feed and some stocking of some feed trained fish and then the habitat of attracting what is out there right to you, you're gonna have some pretty awesome fishing real quick. It's, it's gonna be awesome. All right, this one, 2.8, going back in the water. She's got her tag, that's a $100 prize. This one here. It's not going to work, so it was just kind of a little tight. Yeah, your 200 prize is out the, 200 wow. prize is out the window. You're going to have a solid two pounder there. Ready to roll. Okay, check out these fish. What we don't like about this tank is these carp. So these guys, when you already have an infertile situation with limited food availability, you don't want these guys sucking down any of it. So these guys I'll have a special place uh, next to some of your new planted trees up there. They're going to help your trees grow a lot better. And then these guys right here, I think we need to take these back with us and do a flavor analysis at the lab. Uh, just to make sure that the flavor is, is good, especially, yeah, these two right here, that's, that's gold right there. Now, those are pretty awesome. And then these guys, it's not like a typical situation where you have to just throw all, you know, take all of these out. I mean, typical, typical pond management says, to grow bigger bass, you gotta harvest, harvest, harvest 30, 40, 50 pounds an acre. Well, if you went in and harvested 10 pounds an acre, uh, you, you know, if you're only catching 10 fish on a typical outing, you, you ain't gonna be catching any fish. There's nothing, and it's not like there's anything coming up the rank. So I'm not actually recommending just pounding these fish and taking them out. And especially the bluegills, you're gonna wanna leave them in for a solid three, four years. We're gonna wanna build that population. So, that's that on the fish not not your typical uh farm pond situation all right this is the apprentice noah is he gonna get the speed right to basically just click right in might need to speed up a little he's coming in a little slow <laughs> <laughs> 